That's what the Holy Spirit does. He won't lie to you. So I'm going to look at the administrations of the Lord. Now I already took too much time giving you the background and backdrop because I'm going to give some things in the Greek and I already know that we're taking it from 1 Corinthians 12. Email somebody, call somebody, text somebody because what I'm going to show you is different than what you've heard for the last 40 years on the gifts of the Spirit. And I'm not even dealing with the gifts of the Spirit, but because I have to pass by that to get to what I'm going to show you, I'm going to tell you some things quite different from what teachers have taught, especially for at least 40 years. That's different from what the Word actually says. We mean well. We mean well. And it, it, it's not going to hurt you concerning the blood of Jesus Christ. It's not going to hurt your salvation. But it can do some things with your understanding. Like when the whole world thought that the world was flat. Well, it wasn't true. And even Christopher Columbus, when he read how the God sits on the circuit of the sun, when he re saw that in Isaiah, he knew that the world couldn't be flat because he understood that the word of God was true. And a circuit isn't flat. So it can help you to know things when everybody else believes something that isn't necessarily true. And another example that I'll give you one from the word is remember uh, Samson? His, his, the angel of the Lord came, revealed some things to his mom, um, well, before she was ever pregnant, that, you know, you're going to have a son, da-da-da-da-da. And they were too old to have a kid. And then she tells her husband, and then he, he thinks, oh, we're going to die because we've seen God. The world believed that you can't see God and live. And, and through history, man has believed that. That's not a bad thing to believe. However, it is not necessarily so. A and God doesn't stop and correct every little thing or every big thing that man thinks. He corrects it, but it's in his time. Things like, like in time, I just said time. We call forever, actually I forgot what we call forever, it's been a long time since my college days, but we tend to think of forever as eternity. And when you actually look at how God uses the word forever, time is not a proper thing to call it, but because I don't know a better way to say it for the way we understand, forever and ever, there are two different um, compartments and I'll call it time, though that's not correct. That's not the correct thing. But for the way that we understand and think, there are two different compartments of time. God's not, not just giving a metaphor, giving a figure of speech. They are two specific things, kind of like we'll say a day and a half. And we can use that as an expression, or we might really mean a day and a half. And forever and ever is used both ways in terms of that whole of that time and that other like it but different okay enough of explanation about how to understand things i will probably tell you a million times over and over that when you want to know the definition of something find where god uses that word and look how he uses it yes use your commentaries yes use your dictionaries but without knowing all of these other things, uh, you might not know the nuances. Why God taught me those things is because I actually deal in the nuances when it comes to making a difference in your life and in my life. Those nuances are extremely important in the things that I deal in. Well, they may not have anything to do with what you deal in. God may deal with you in other things and in other ways. And this is why, and I refer to this often, why Ephesians tells us that the body edifies itself in love by what every joint supplies. I mean, your hand can work fine without your ring finger, but not the way it was intended to work. Your hand can work fine without your thumb, but not the way it's intended. And if you were born without any of these digits, 
you don't know the difference and you work it just fine but not the way God intended you see the body of Christ we absolutely need what every joint supplies and if we're so used to doing without that a particular joint if we're so used to doing without a thumb without a pinky we may not ever know until it's joined or if if you're a thumb and you see the pinky you might not even like him and you might want to you're too big why don't you shrink yourself down you're too much or why don't you grow up or do you see what I'm saying and I'm saying that on purpose because I'm going to deal with administrations of the Lord and I'll tell you now so that if I don't come to it in the scriptures you read it yourself in 1 Corinthians 12 God gives a list of the gifts of the Spirit. He gives a list of something we don't even look at. I'm going to show you how to show see it because God gave it that way. But we, we've been so busy teaching gifts of the Spirit a certain way that we miss something that God showed us. He showed us the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, not just the gifts of the Spirit. He showed us gifts. He showed us administrations. He showed us operations of the Lord. And one of the things God taught me is that all through his word, when you see one, the others are there. You might have to read further to see, but you don't have the whole picture till you see Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Okay, so he gives a list of gifts of the Spirit in this chapter 12. And he gives a list of operations of God. But on administrations of the Lord, what we're looking at today, he gives relationship. He doesn't give a list. The list is over in Romans. I think Romans 12, but it's Romans. I'll, I might check it before we're done, but you check it in your word. But here, he gives a list of the gifts of the Spirit, and they're actually um, whole uh I'm trying to think of the word, but whole um, categories. It's not just a gift. And I'm not going to teach on that today. We're going to administrations of the Lord. But it's not just a gift. It's categories. I have a whole course on it. Email me at uh, revhomes at revhomes.com and put in the subject line. Uh, if you remember this, I'll actually send it to you. Put in the subject line, gifts, administrations, operations because that's what God calls it here in his word. So he gives a, a list of gifts of the spirit and its categories, not just a specific gift. And he gives a list of operations of God, but of administrations of the Lord, he talks relationship. And I want you to know it's in the middle. It's in the middle. You need to know God's order of things that you're, you're coming this way. You have to pass through here to even get to here. And if you think that you're going to move in the gifts of the Spirit without moving with your brother, with your sister, administrations of the Lord, and get to operations of God, If you don't get it right, you're not going to have it right. And that's why I'm sharing this. Okay, so part of the thing I explained to you about the commentaries, it, it frustrates me to, to no end, but if you have the old the old copies of, of uh, Strong's, for example, you're going to see something that I'm going to share with you. God tells us in 1 Corinthians 12, he starts out saying, now, and by the way, I used, I used to mistakenly think that meant right now, as now. Well, no. Uh, and does it give, it's a, it's a participle. It's a primary participle. Now, if you're not into language, you don't even know what that means. But it doesn't mean now in sense of time. It means but and and also. And when God uses that, whether it's the Greek or the Hebrew, when God says uh, and, it's like an iron link that it's not to be without the other thing. That the first thing that he's saying is strong by itself. But when he gives you and, it's to be linked. It's not to be without the other thing. That is strong by itself. Kind of like um, uh, in a structure, 
when you need a pillar to hold up, well, it does, that pillar is absolutely necessary. But the other pillar is also absolutely necessary, pardon me, for the structure to be held up properly. And I'm only using two. You, you understand in a structure there could be more than one pillar. So in the body of Christ. So he says here, but and or also. Now, I enjoy a particular minister. Uh, I've enjoyed him for probably 50 years who says uh, when, you want, when you see the nevertheless or, or the moreover or the therefore in scripture, he says you want to go back and see what it's there for. Now is used in that kind of way. God is saying, now to move on from what I already said. So the things that he said before are necessary to understand what he's saying now. I'm not going to tell you all of what he said before. I'm letting you know so that you can read your scripture and go there. Okay? But this this is necessary to say a thing the way God said it. And then when you do know and understand, please know and understand that it'll fill you or can fill you so that it, it fills you that you feel like you got it all. And then he'll expand you so that you can receive more and teach you more if you let him. He'll teach you more and give you more. And this is another reason why you want to build yourself up on your most holy faith. You want to move in love and and so that you can move in the body of Christ so that you can hear what he shared and what he gave somebody else and so that you can minister grace and and have it the body can grow like he said and the church can grow and by the way in this chapter 12 God says the church and God says the body same entity but when God says church he's talking of us in one way and uh, one commission if you will and when he says body he's talking of us in another way and you want to pay attention to the difference now that I told you in this chapter when you read it later. But now, now concerning gifts or but, moreover, moving on from the understanding that previously gave you in the, in the previous chapters and the things that I dealt with there. And I don't mean me, I'm talking about the scripture because the scripture says now. It's actually in the Greek. Concerning spirituals, brethren, and if you're looking at King James, I love King James just because the best of the commentaries are usually off of King James. It doesn't make them automatically correct. But if you're using King James, you see that it doesn't say what I just now said. You have to be looking at it in the Greek. In your English Bible, it says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren. Well, the word gifts is in italics because if you're using King James, all the words in italics are not in the Greek. Or if you're looking at it in Hebrew, the words in italics are supplied not because they're mistranslations, but to make the language flow. Because here's where if you look at Strong's from back when I first had my first Strong's back in late 60s, early 70s, uh, you're not going to find it in the digital one now. But the word spirituals is a pronominal. Now, the reason why I know about pronominals is because here again, I did language as a second major when I was doing one of my, I forget which, which level that was in college. So I know about these things. And you wouldn't know now. I was just now checking the digital. It tells you that spiritual is an adjective. And I didn't check to see if it lets you know it's plural. In the Greek, it's plural. It says now or but or moreover concerning spirituals, brethren. But because there's no such thing as a pronominal in English, we let it act the word spiritual. We make it singular. God used it plural. We make it sim- singular and give a, a, a noun that makes sense, gifts. And we make that plural because that's what makes sense to the English mind for what God was saying. But when you want to really know what he's saying, and I'm one of those that does, I'm looking at it. I studied it out and oh. Now concerning spirituals, brethren. Now he's talking to brethren. He's not talking to the heathen. I like to pay attention to that. And uh, he says, I would not have you ignorant. I have a whole course on how many things God said I would not have you ignorant. 
and he's not playing about that. One of the things I noticed, by the way, about the things he says, I would not have you ignorant, there's whole denominations on each one of those things that majors on one, not all of them, just one of the things, one of the separate things that God says, I wouldn't have you ignorant. That tends to make us mistaken when we major on one thing and leave out all the rest that is supposed to be included. If you wanted a house, how about if you just had a bedroom and no kitchen? I love to cook. If you give me a room, a bedroom, I'm, I'm at a loss. I don't know what to do. Or everything I know to do is going to turn the bedroom into a kitchen. And that's kind of what we do with God's word. When we know one thing and apply it, we only know what he gave us. And don't leave for what he revealed to other parts of the body. So, now concerning spirituals, brethren, the word spirituals is a pronominal. When you learned, I think it was third grade, that I learned uh, the parts of speech, there's no pronominal in English. So, the subject is spirituals. And 1 Corinthians 12, I'll tell you now ahead of time, because knowing me, I won't get to the end. But 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14 is on the whole subject of spirituals. And I'll hurry up and tell you, you, you read it so connect the dots. I normally like to connect the dots, but I'm, I want to be able to get in about administrations of the Lord. So I'm not going to explain the whole thing the way that I do when I teach the course on gifts, administrations, operations. But you'll see that God's, the whole subject of spirituals is 1 Corinthians 12, 13, 14. And if you don't know it already, the chapter divisions were given in the, in the 1200s. They're not divine. And in that subject of spirituals, you get to know that because one chapter ends when it's really the next verse or two of the next chapter finishes the point. And, and by the way, the, the verse divisions weren't till the 1400s. So it's not, they're not bad. I'm in a place right now and it has an address. It was easier to find with an address. The scriptures, I'm thankful for the chapters and for the, the verse because I can tell you 1 Corinthians 12. I can tell you the address, where it's found. It's just a whole lot easier. Okay, so 1 Corinthians, of uh, the spirituals, the address <laughs> is 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14. And also, uh, God teaches it the way that he says, I'll teach knowledge and show doctrine. I had I noticed that, uh, and that's uh, Isaiah. I think it's twenty eight ten, and it's, it could be the verse before and after because that's a whole. The verses around it explain the whole thing of what God's saying. But He says, "To whom will I show knowledge, and to whom will I teach doctrine?" And then He goes on. He tells you that, and then He tells you precept must be upon precept, and God's not stuttering when He says precept must be uh, precept upon precept. Now, the first one, he said, it must be. And one of those words is in italics because the sense of that it has to be this way is there. It's kind of like when you look in outer space and you can see um, the the planets and, and you can see the bodies. That's the must be. That's how it is. But then when you hone in a little more, precept upon precept, that's the second part that you can see more. You can see the outlines of the bodies of water or the this and the that. And God says... And God does this often. He says things in pairs. And I'm sharing that with you because he does that in the subject of spirituals. He'll say things in pairs. Remember I told you, he says church and he says body. And he says something about the church. And then he says something about the body. But to know that God is saying a pair, the way he said precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept. It's that category about precepts, but the one you want to understand, the precept that governs everything, everything. And then there's more that is going to give you a whole new, it, uh, the way that we do Roman number one and then A, capital A. It has to do with still what's in Roman number one and then Roman number two. So it's not hard. This is not hard. 
this is stuff we deal with all the time. I, I don't understand me personally why when it's the word of God, we make it like it's so hard. No, it isn't. It's the revelation of God. So he says, I wouldn't have you ignorant. I personally think it's a trick of the enemy that we are mostly ignorant about specifically the things God's word says, I wouldn't have you ignorant. And it's brethren, not the heathen, not the world. We, the body of Christ, we, the church, we, the ones who are supposed to be living letters and living epistles, we are the ones who know how to expound the word of God so that people understand. Okay, so he's, uh, I'm going to skip or I'll get caught up in this, the next verse especially since I've been, anyway. So he says in verse three, wherefore I give you to understand, please know that I give you to understand. I don't give you to be mistaken. I don't give you to be confused. I give you to understand and that no man speaking by the spirit of God. I can't help myself. The first time we see the mention of spirit of God, remember I told you when you look for uh, one part of the one aspect of God, look for all three. The first mention of the Spirit of God, most of us just miss it. But it's in Genesis that the Spirit of Elohim, in the beginning Elohim, but then, I think it's verse 2, I don't think it's still in verse 1, but verse 2, the Spirit of Elohim hovered over the face of the deep. Most of us miss, I'll call it this way, in our um, modern day churchianity vernacular most of us miss that the spirit of God hovering over the face of the deep we miss we're so busy about the spirit of the Lord we don't even recognize that it was a long time before God even used the term before he even introduced Ruach Yahweh or the spirit of the Lord the first time we see the spirit of God the, there's some things that we should understand what, and one is he hovers over the face of the deep. God hadn't finished creating. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. I'm trying not to go there. People make a joke that when I study, you're going to go to Genesis 1 and you're going to end up in Revelation. Uh, uh, but I'm trying not to do that so that we can get through this in the time. But however, though I'm using but the way, the way God does for all that that I already said, that, that now, that... There's some things that even before all of the other things that God, Elohim, that God is doing that are him without any, the serpent hasn't shown up yet, man hasn't shown up yet, without anything other than him. There's some things that he gave us to understand about the spirit of God. Okay. And so we're supposed to have already known that. And especially... Uh, recognize that this part of scripture, Corinthians, we know is written by a Hebrew of Hebrews. Now, it's by God, but he caused someone who knows these nuances and is, lives in them in understanding here and in understanding here, who gave his word. So it's not accidental. Not, God doesn't do things by accident anyway. But I'm showing you how to know that. Okay, so no man speaking by the Spirit of God. Now remember, the first revelation of the Spirit of God is that he hovered over the face of the deep. Before you get to know all about the rest of what he's going to say, before God goes on and says, and God said, let there be light. And God said, and God did, and God made. Before you even get to know that, the Spirit of God is there hovering over. And God, and Jesus lets you know, and now I'm going to stop and look up the scripture, because he said Spirit and didn't identify whether he's talking about Yahweh, Spirit of Yahweh, Spirit of Elohim. I don't want to go into those differences now. I want to deal with the administrations of the Lord. I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God call, and here again, I'm always going to tell you, calleth in the King James, E-T-H on the end of a word, is a, here again, a part of speech that we don't have in English. It's a part of speech that means was, is, and ongoing. 
So just know that about ETH. Don't, don't let it confuse you. It's not hard. You know that when you left the house, you left, you're on your way, and you're going to arrive. We deal with it all the time. It's not hard. Okay, so no man calleth Jesus accursed. Not speaking by the Spirit of, of God or the first thing that we understood about God. You might have a whole lot of things to learn. There might You might have a whole lot of things to grow up into. You might have a whole lot of things to move into concerning your understanding, concerning the things that you know, concerning things of faith. But you're speaking by the Spirit of Elohim or the Spirit of God? There's no way that you're calling Jesus a curse. So when we think that we know what it looks like when someone's in the Spirit, and all of us do, uh, we have their, our denominational mind, our dispensational mind, all of these things that we've, you know, move into, we, we, we think we know, all of us think we know what it looks like when someone's in the Spirit. Or we know that we don't. But we still have some idea of thought. Well, whatever it is that you think, whatever it is you think you're looking at, whatever it is you think you're experiencing, no one, he lets you know here, speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed. I'll let you in on a little something about uh, language, why I like to get into the language, because you miss it when you don't know the Greek. Um, but in Acts, when uh, Paul came to a certain place and this, this soothsayer is following him around, uh, this young woman, and she's, oh, men of God, you know, follow, follow him. He's showing you, um, your English Bible says, the way of salvation. The Greek lets you know it's a way of salvation. Well, Jesus isn't a way of salvation. He's the way of salvation. What she was saying, what they were understanding, was going to include all the rest of her suits saying stuff and all the rest of, look, Jesus, <laughs> God is not all the different names that other religions come up with. God is not Allah. God is not, do you, I, I hope you understand. I know that you understand. And some of us have misunderstood. And that's why he's letting you know, no man speaking by the spirit of God calls Jesus a curse. It may, it may look like what you call in the spirit, but if it's saying Jesus is a curse, that's not the spirit of God. This is his word. This isn't my opinion. It's not your opinion. This is his word. It can be your opinion. But what makes it so is that it's his word. Okay. So no man can say that Jesus is Lord. But by, and here he, he says something slightly different, but it's the same entity. The Holy Ghost. Or if you don't like the word ghost, the Holy Spirit. Holy I, I love the sign language for holy. It's like God wipes the sink clean. Holy. <laughs> but by the Holy Ghost. Now he, what God's bringing in here is that you're moving in holiness and righteousness unto God. When you're talking about Ruach, well that's the Hebrew. Um, spirit, it's Numa. But when you're talking the Spirit of God, you're talking things holy. This is why Jesus said he'll lead you and guide you into all truth. Not just some of the truth, not just a piece of the truth. And Please know that when he leads you and guides you into all truth, he doesn't do it all at once. Most of us can't even take it, the little bits that he gives us, it feels like all at once. I know when he shows me things, it feels like a whole universe of things. And then when he helps me to know and grow, I realize it was like that much. <laughs> but it fills you up like it's everything. Well, you need to know that the because it's holy, it's in that realm of righteousness and holiness. Uh, and for people who don't like the culture that likes to repeat things, go back and look how many times God said, be holy for I am holy in that, in that particular verse. He says it over and over and over and over and over. And for those of you that don't like the denomination that answers, that says a thing and then there's an answer, says a thing and there's an answer, that's a God thing. He says a thing and then you answer and he says, holy. God is big on holy. Okay, so now he begins to explain. <laughs> and here we go with that word now again. Let me make sure it's the same one. Yes, it is. It's dia. Yes, it is. It's the same one. So with all of that understanding, with all of that understanding, there are diversities. And I'll tell you now, the word diversities and the word differences, it's the same Greek word. So there are diversities, differences 
of gifts, pneuma, but the same spirit. This, uh, pardon me, the word gifts is um, charismata, not pneuma. There are the same, uh, there are differences, pardon me, differences of gifts, but the same spirit. And then the next verse, and, and remember I told you, when, God, when the word is there in the Greek or in the Hebrew, it's connective in a way that you're not supposed to do without either. Either one can stand on its own, every pillar can stand on its own, but they each are part of the job of doing, of holding up the structure, okay? So there are differences of administrations. And remember, the word differences and the word diversity, same word in the Greek. And remember, I let you know that when we think of administrations, we tend to think in our modern day world, but I want you to see how God uses it because it has to do with relationship. It doesn't have to do with corporate structure. It doesn't have to do with um, the way that we think of it. Okay, I'm going to show you how God uses it. You want to move in the gifts of the Spirit to different categories. And it's and the, by the way, the categories are different than the way that I've heard it taught for 40 years, more than 40 years. And the categories are different than the way God separates it out here. I'm not going to deal with that today. But I'm going to show you that when you do it the other way, the way that we can think of in our minds, not messing with the body and blood of Jesus Christ, just coming up with us thinking and the way that we can divide things out when we're thinking. I can think of a whole lot of ways to divide the stars. It's not how God did it. To divide bodies of war. It's not how God did it. And then how he did it, it moves and it changes. So, you know, when I do a thing, I want it to stay the same. When I dust, I don't want to see any more dust. But in this earth, it doesn't stay the same. So we need to know these things. Uh, so there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. Do you see, he's not saying, how do we get the term gifts of the Spirit? And we completely miss administrations of the Lord. Because we're dividing it differently than... The word of truth, we're dividing it differently than God divides it here. It causes us to miss what he told us. He t and, 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 the and is there in the Greek. There are differences of operations, but it is the same God with which worketh all in all. We make that the way that I've heard it taught my entire saved life. We make that all under gifts of the Spirit. And what God said is gifts of the Spirit, op, uh, administrations of the Lord, operations of God. The Trinity's there. He's there. I want to share with you something else on Genesis, but uh, I'll move on. Now, he says, I have a chart that I would love if it could be put up on the screen, but I'll tell it to you so that you can, if you like to do that kind of thing. I do. I realize everybody doesn't. But you can see that this word manifestation doesn't have to just to do with what's shown and what's made obvious. But we've taken this word manifestation to make it say much less than what God is saying. And so here again, it makes us miss the whole of spirituals. And we hone in on that one, gifts of the Spirit. So he says, and then, by the way, we hone on one aspect of gifts of the Spirit. And then we make everything, we, we mix up. We put a whole lot in that basket that doesn't go in that basket. Okay, so watch here. He says in verse 7, But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. We have so many doctrines. I don't want to even go through all the different doctrines that we have on explaining that one of the things that I want you to understand is the word manifestation and I, I like I said I have a chart if you send revholmes at revholmes.com put in the subject line uh, the word either phonorosis or manifestation and I'll send you the chart but if you go through, and you can use a Strong's Concordance to do this, you will find that the while the word manifestation does mean show, uh, okay, here we go. 
while it does mean show and it does mean make known what do I have to hit to get back there the word manifestation the root of it what it comes out of is the phonerosis the showing is the same word as utterance hold on you Pentecostals I know you want to go there and you like this but it's it's even different than your corner or room of doctor but it's the word utterance when they were all filled with the Holy Spirit as God gave utterance you see the manifestation the word manifestation the root of it has to do with utterance the Holy Spirit Jesus told you he's he's gonna show you whatsoever things that I told you so when you take that word and show the development of the word one of the things that you get to know and understand is that the manifestation of the Spirit, especially things vocal, things that he shows through speaking. Now, Pentecostals, I want you to understand, it doesn't have to be tongues. But he is talking about the things that the Spirit gives through speaking. The manifestation of the Spirit, it's given, pardon me, not it. I mind when we call the Holy Spirit it. He's part of the Godhead. He's he, him, he. Stop calling him it. Anyway, I mean, you can say it about his move, but don't call him it. You wouldn't like someone to call you it. So, is given to every man. God gives every man to profit all of us he gives every one of you to speak his word his revelation his understanding now it might not be every way it might not be every way and and to use the acts 2 4 when this is, people were speaking in different tongues it was the different tongues of the people that were around so that they heard men and the word says speaking the wonderful works of God so that everybody hears, everybody understands the wonderful works of God. So please understand that. And if it messes with the doctrine that you've always heard, okay, I messed with you. I did. The word did, actually. I just told you what it says. Okay, so now he goes through the, the list of the gifts of the Spirit. I'm going to skip those because what I want to deal with is administrations of the Lord. And... I want you to pay attention, though. He gave a list. You want to divide the list up according to the way that he did it, since I know that we'd like to divide them up according to what is it, um, speaking gifts and so on like that. But the way that God gave it is, I'm laughing because I already took so much time and I'm just now getting to where I want to be, where I want you to be. But when you want to divide up the gifts of the Spirit, try doing it the way he did here in the Word. Because he said, to one is given, and then put the li put it in a list. And then when he says another, then make a different list. And I'll let you know now that you do want to use your Greek because when he says to another, there's two different words for another. Same word English, another, but one means another, and then the other means another of another kind. And it, now remember, he's talking brethren, so he's not talking heathen or believer, non-believer. No, all brethren. But one who moves in this way and one who move, moves in that way. One who has this calling or one who has that calling. Okay, so divide it the way that God did. Just, just, just to give you a heads up on how to divide things. And then another division that God gives here is he says, by the same spirit. And then let that list be until he says again, by the same spirit. Make another list. Okay, so now let's move. He gave a list. And then he lets you know, but all these, all of these, whether you understand categories or each little nuance, and some are singular, some are plural, that's stuff you want to pay attention to. But all these worketh, already work, working, will continue to work, work at that one and the self same spirit. Okay, we don't have a problem about that. Dividing separately to every man as he will. He'll give you to speak something. And it'll be different from what I'm speaking. He might give you to speak about the wonders of God. He might give me to speak about the anointing. Usually he gives me to speak about the glory of God, not so much about the anointing. But I'm not mad at the person that teaches anointing. And 
while both are of God, you'll learn something different about anointing. When you move in anointing, uh, you're going to need some rest. When you move in the glory of God, it gives you energy so that you can outrun chariots. Elijah, okay? Um, but there's a difference. Same God. But there's a difference when you're moving in the anointing, when you move in the glory. We live in days and times when you need to move in the glory of God to get done all that's on your plate, all that you already have to do. But you're so busy moving in anointing and you don't know why you're worn out. Jesus rested when he moved in the anointing. Check it out. Check it out. Okay, but I want to move on. Okay, gifts, um, administrations of the Lord. Now watch. For as the body, and that's how you know when he moved from one category to the other. When he moved from the spirit, gifts of the spirit, to administrations of the Lord. When he says body, when he has ch says church, those are things of the Lord or administrations of the Lord. For as the body is one, God wants us to know. We, we have no problem with God as one. We have some problems with the body as one. Hmm. I don't, because I'm short on time for this hour, but you know, hath many members. Now you're not mad at your heart because it doesn't move like your hand. You're not mad at your liver because you can't see it. And by the way, you can't do without your liver. There's some parts of the body you can't do without, just like you can't do without your liver. When God uses body, that's because we're fearfully and wonderfully made. There's some lessons that we can take from our physical body to understand about the, the body of Christ. You can cut hairs and, and do without some hairs, but you cannot do without your heart. And then in modern medicine, when we figure out how you can do without your appendix, we cut it out and then don't understand why you thought you could do without it. And then all these other things happen. We found out decades later that there's all these problems when we cut out the tonsils and we cut out the appendix we didn't know because we thought we could do without it. You thought you could do without that brother who you don't like his doctrine. I, 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 I'm not going to testify. So, for as the body is one, as the body is one, but hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, God's not stuttering, are one body so also is Christ now I'll remind you because God uses this pattern of re when he repeats a thing like precept must be upon precept precept upon precept God is not stuttering when God says a thing twice it's because it's immutable irrefutable it is that way it's not going to be another way you can fast and pray you can keep trying you can keep trying for it to be another way but when God tells you a thing twice that is how it is so we're the ones that need to get on board with what God said. The body's one. We need to stop separating ourselves out because we think we have a reason. No, we don't. We have reason to follow his word. And when I don't agree with what you say, and I don't like, I'm a theologian. I hear stuff all the time from people I respect and love that I know that is so not word. And I know they wouldn't be saying it if they didn't think it was word. Well, I'm not separating because the word says we're one. I ask God, show me what they're seeing. Show me what you gave them. And if, if they're incorrect as I think they are, help me to be like Aquila and Priscilla. You know, God said of Apollos that he was eloquent. God said so. That's what the word of God says about him. But he was teaching some things that weren't quite correct. He was teaching to the best of his knowledge. And Aquila and Priscilla pulled him aside and expounded the word of God more uh, perfectly, I think the word says. Look it up, look it up. So that we don't have to back off and get an attitude with one another just because somebody said some doctrine that we just know is incorrect. Now, if it's about the blood, the scripture lets us know. If it's about Jesus... And, and being God, fully God, fully man, if it's about the resurrection, yeah, the scripture lets us know, uh-uh, that you let go of. Mm -mm. That's heresy. But when you know it's a brother or sister, and you, you know that they love the Lord, but they have a doctrine, you don't disjoin and you don't fall out with them 
or quietly separate. Some of you aren't, you know, you're not so ready to argue, but you will pull away. No, we don't do that. Moving in love. There is no part of your body that you're supposed to do without. And in the body of Christ, I need you. You need me. God's the one who said that the body built edifies, builds itself up. And that's more than build up the way we think. By what every joint supplies. We know through prosthesis that you can do without a leg. You can do without a limb. You can, and, and you can keep functioning. But it's harder. It's more difficult. It's not how it's supposed to be. So stop cutting your brother off and your sister off or this denomination off and that. I understand that God calls that stuff carnal in Corinthians. It was carnal when he said it. And it, and there were, I'll call them denominations now. Don't, don't, don't get mad at me, my Hebrew brethren and sister. Um, but the different sects of this and that is the same as denominations in terms of, oh, we believe this over here and we believe it that way. It was that that whole this whole thing of denominations wasn't new. God called it carnal. Okay, none of us are meaning to be carnal. We we're not doing it to be carnal. We're we're mostly doing it to be correct. But then we do it in ways that God doesn't want us separating out from each other. So I want you to see here. I I usually when I teach this I call it I think I say it seems to me I'm calling it administrations of the Lord so that you can see the whole thing. You go back and read it because we're supposed to see. God gave us to see. We're supposed to say, say to this mountain, be thou removed. And that's what's going to happen. Okay. I call it, I think I say, it seems to me things that God has given us to do, but when we do it wrong, it doesn't make it so. I want you to see that in administrations of the Lord. We have to be in relationship with one another. And just because we move out of a relationship, it doesn't mean that it's not the body. And so he says here, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. There's doctrines on baptisms. You know there's nine, yeah, nine in the New Testament. I bet you don't even know what they are. But there's nine in the New Testament that are mentioned. And we're supposed to know, I, I have a whole course that I call um, Moving to Perfection. From Hebrews 6, 1 through 3. And he names in pairs, <laughs> he names in pairs doctrine of baptisms. And I give a whole teaching on that. So on one thinks about baptism, well, it's got to be tongues. And the other thinks about baptism, well, it's filling, but not necessarily tongues. Another thinks about baptisms, well, it's being saved. Listen, he said here, by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. And that's why I let you know that when you know the Lord, it is the Holy Spirit who baptizes you into the Spirit of Christ. Similar to the, the baby being born of water coming out through water. So go through and read. I think I say it seems to me the different things that we think and we say. And God says, is it not of a body? No, it's not that way. We are one body. The administrations of the Lord, that's what it's like. He didn't give a list. He gave relationship. Amen.